Welcome back. Again, my name is Ron Keck from Subcast Studios. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how I like to mic the guitar cabinet and what to do in, in certain situations that might be a problem here. First thing we want to talk about is, is the actual power that you're going to deliver to the amplifier. And the reason I say that is because it's not uncommon that if you have a direct feed that you're taking into uh, Pro Tools, and a lot of times I like to take a direct feed along with a regular guitar feed because I like to use it as an insurance policy, you actually run the risk of having a, a ground loop problem, okay? Do not settle on abnormal sounds, like a, a high buzzing sound, okay? Those are actually harmonics from a ground, a ground problem, okay? A lot of people can go lift the ground and it'll actually take away the 60 cycle hum, which is, that obviously you want to try to do that, but let's say you don't have a 60 cycle hum, but you have a little bit of a buzz. Well, the buzzing is actually the harmonics of a ground loop problem, okay? So still want to try to resolve those problems. So lifting the ground, um, and then in some cases, you, you if you've got single coil pickups running through a guitar, and obviously you want to have the guitar player move a little bit and try to get rid of those sounds because what happens is, as you, let's say it's a solo guitar and you have noise floor, it's distracting in most cases. If the band is playing, you've got a lot of tracks, it's not as exposed so you can get away with it, but uh, let's say there's a solo section, it's the guitar by itself, and you don't realize it as you're tracking, but all of a sudden you got this noise floor in there. So the first thing I like to do is try to get as clean of a sound as you possibly can get off the amp that's not normal, buzz, hum, or whatever. At least try to get that noise floor as low as you possibly can. As far as like microphones go, I don't get crazy with the microphones. I, I have go-to mics. Um, the Royer 122 is one of my go-to mics. And believe it or not, a 57 is, is a go-to mic. And I, I know a lot of people like to use condenser mics, a large diaphragm condenser mic. But um, these are basically my two mics that I like to utilize on most guitar cabinets. One thing you want to do, uh, be careful with, is if you've got a screaming guitar rig like a Marshall amp, believe it or not, you can overdrive these mics. The 57, not so much. The Royer 122, you can overdrive this microphone and you can break the ribbon in it. And we've had that happen here a few times, okay? So you want to be careful that um, you pay attention to how loud the guitar player is actually playing with his rig. First thing I like to do is I like to try to figure out where that speaker, the center of the speaker cone is, okay? And a lot of times if you can't see it, you can actually put your hand on it, you can actually feel where the, the round circle is. I don't like to put my ribbon mics directly in the center uh, of the cone. Um, it's a little too bright for my liking, so a lot of times I will offset it a little bit. It makes the sound a little bit darker, okay? Um, this is a figure eight, so you're, um, the proximity effect isn't so so critical. You're not going to get too much of the proximity effect with a uh, figure eight mic. It's not uncommon for me to take this mic and flip it around. And believe it or not, it's one of those things where you got to just try it. If, you, if you're getting a lot of thumping kind of sound, sometimes you get this heavy, heavy sound. You can actually take this mic and actually turn it around and it'll actually lighten up the sound for you. But I usually start with, with the logo facing it first and see what it sounds like. And then if it's, you know, if I'm getting an odd, a heavy thumping kind of sound then what I'll do is I'll turn this mic around um, but I'll start with it in that uh, location and then I'll take my 57 and now this is this is important because a lot of people have a misconception of phase okay now phase is nothing more than sound reaching the diaphragm of one microphone and then take and then having a little bit of a lag in time as it reaches the next microphone. So a foot back is going to give you about a millisecond delay. Okay, um, you can definitely have a phase issue. You can have a phase issue here. Okay, it what happens is your frequencies travel at different various times. Okay, so stereo, in my humble opinion, is nothing more than a phase discrepancy from side to side. Okay, so you're going to have phase. Uh, discrepancies. How much you have um, is depending on how far away you have your mics in relation to each other. Okay, so sometimes you might want to have this mic further back to try to create a, uh, a different type of stereo imaging. Now, if you find all of a sudden it's canceling out your your mid voicings, then obviously you're going to want to start playing around on how far back you put your microphones in relation to each other. Okay, so a lot of times I'll start like right here. And I get them relatively close, and I'll actually A, B the two, and then 
together and I'll put them in mono at the board and see how in phase they sound. As I pull my mic back, you can start to hear it start to cancel out some frequencies or it may come more focused. It depends. I mean, you're gonna have to just sit there and experiment with it. We talked about creating a stereo image using our Blumian setup like what we have here. Um, both mics are set in a figure eight. And as I said earlier, you're gonna to wanna to experiment. Maybe you have one in figure eight and one in a cardioid pattern and see how that works in the control room. Pan, pan them off, one left and right. Maintain the integrity of, you got, of the mics that you have here up on the rig and then bleed this in to, to create this image, okay? And again, now, now, as you apply compression to these mics, you're gonna start pulling in more of the room, okay? So you wanna be mindful of it, of how far you actually take these mics away from the sound source, okay? Because I see a lot of people take these mics and put them way back, but keep in mind that the time it takes to reach these microphones versus these mics here for your room sound, the further you go back, obviously it takes a lot more time to get to these mics. So you may not want to have this delay. So believe it or not, you can create a beautiful image having these mics relatively close to the sound source. Now not way up on them, but relatively close, maybe like this, okay? So you're gonna have to have the guitar player play a little bit, go in there, listen to it. And then if you think you want to get more of the room sound, the further away from the sound source you're gonna go. But keep in mind your compression as you apply it to these mics will bring your room in even more so. So if you're recording in a house, um, take into account the sound that you're getting from your room. So that's pretty much what I, how I like to mic a guitar cabinet.